Here's a question I get asked often. Can God change a narcissist? Professionals and those who play one on TV all agree that narcissists don't change. And I don't believe that's true. So in today's episode, I want to share with you why I believe that narcissists can change the three caveats of narcissism and the guidelines that are going to help you determine if your narcissist is even redeemable. Well, hey, my friends, my name is Chris Reese, and I want to welcome you back to another edition of the Building Faith Podcast, where it is my hope to bring you biblical solutions to life's tough challenges. So if you are not already subscribed, would you go ahead and hit that subscribe and notification button? Can God change a narcissist? Absolutely. And I want to break down why I believe this in just a moment, but please note that this isn't based upon statistical information or even pop psychology, but rather one woman's opinion and experience. Look, I've seen a lot of narcissists in my day. More so, I see the people that the narcissists infect. And I have seen firsthand, personally and professionally, the damage that a narcissist can do to your physical, emotional, mental, and even spiritual health. And in many cases, there can be lifelong side effects. So for me to make such a bold, contradictory statement, I want you to allow me the grace to break down some levels of narcissism and help you determine if yours is redeemable or beyond hope. So I want you to think of narcissism in terms of three informal levels, ignorant, arrogant, and malignant. The ignorant narcissist is typically unaware of their destructive behaviors. They're likely emotionally immature and they definitely have not been taught properly. This does not excuse their behavior, but there's still some hope here if, and we're going to get to the ifs in a moment. I want you to think of these ignorant narcissists as children. If you're a, a woman, you likely feel like you're married to a man child. And maybe if you're a man and you're in a relationship with a narcissistic woman, she likely presents sometimes as either dependent uh, with an inability to cope with the challenges in life, or she's overly domineering and controlling. The arrogant is just another level up. And this narcissist is more grounded in their traits as they've recognized their wrongdoing and they continue to make decisions that only work in their favor. Arrogant isn't limited to that overt narcissist. Arrogant simply describes their lack of care that a person has regarding their actions. They don't care how they affect you. And this narcissist likely knows better, is more intelligent, and knows exactly what they're doing and doesn't care, unless it impacts them. More on that in a moment. The malignant is the most troublesome of all. This narcissist is solidified in their beliefs that life is all about them and they will trample anyone in their way and they don't care who they impact. These people are highly abusive and they actually derive pleasure from hurting others. And they will stop at nothing to lie and manipulate to get what they want. And while many people in distressing narcissistic relationships jump to the assumption that their narcissist is malignant, please understand that this is a very, very small percentage of the narcissists out there. Okay. So now that we've broken down informally, of course, levels of narcissism, which as an aside, I want you to know, my friend, we all have levels and degrees of narcissism. I want us to measure hope on how likely your narcissist is to change. There's hope if their life is impacted in a negative way. If there is risk that they'll lose something that's important to them, for example, your love, your time, your affection, your money, your companionship, or if you have something that they want, then they will likely change if something is important to them. Remember, they are very self-centered individuals. This is where boundaries can prove to be fruitful and they will likely fall in line, albeit reluctantly, if there is a risk of great loss for them or the potential of great gain. Just keep in mind though, this might be temporary because if they find someone or something else to meet that need, they're likely gonna ditch you in a heartbeat. Here's another, there's hope if 
they're more low level. The higher the level, the less likely they are to change. The higher the level of narcissism, the longer they have been making this conscious decision all in their favor. And what they're doing is they're deadening their conscience. So you're going to have a very difficult time trying to get through to them the longer they've been making these choices. The longer and the more grounded they are in their ways, the less likely they are to see the error of them. Just keep in mind that if you are using or relying upon the narcissist for any of your unmet needs, this will backfire. So I want to refer you to check out this episode right here on how to love the narcissist without losing yourself. So does this mean that only low level narcissists have hope? Well, of course not. Despite popular psychology, I believe all things are possible with God. God can redeem anyone at any time. And that includes the narcissist, the ignorant, the arrogant, and the malignant. But here's what I don't want you to get hung up on. I don't want you to get hung up on hope for the sake of hope. So what do I mean? Yes. Put your hope in God, but that does not mean that you tolerate toxic evil behavior all in the name of hope. That would be an acceptance and an enablement of evil on your part. I want you to think of the narcissist as you would any other sin. If someone in your life is sinning against you and unrepentant, you do not slap a hope label on it and say, I believe they're going to change. You see, in Matthew 7, 15, Jesus tells us that we will know them by their fruit. Now, this scripture was referring to identifying false prophets, but I believe it also pertains to people in general. And look, we can be easily fooled by somebody's words, but their actions show us who they really are. A tree struggling to bear fruit may need some pruning and a little extra TLC, but a tree refusing to bear fruit, well, that needs to be treated differently. So what are you dealing with? Is this someone who is struggling, who sees the error of their ways and wants to change? It will likely be a very bumpy road, but there is some hope here. Is this someone who is dealing with a lower level of narcissism and willing to see where they're going wrong? And even if it's just a little bit at a time, there's still some hope there. Just remember this, narcissists don't grow out of narcissism. They actually grow into it. And it gets worse without God's intervention and serious boundaries. And they are masters at making you believe what they say, despite what they do. And that's why I want you to check out this episode next on the four steps that help me escape gaslighting. And be sure to grab a copy of your free Toxic People Survival Guide. It is my free gift to you to help you identify and deal with all the difficult people in your life. I'll go ahead and include a link in the description below.